Our eyes have been dragged from warfare in both Ukraine and Russia and Israel and Gaza. Uh, and, and there are reasons for that. Sometimes, I'm afraid, fatigue plays a part. But our attention has been dragged back to both theatres in the last 24, 48 hours. And we will be catching up with what the latest developments in Russia mean uh, in the course of this programme. But the first hour is going to be dedicated to uh, a combination of stories that that not only beg a belief, but also, I think, lead inexorably to the conclusion that the modern state of Israel is now operating with complete impunity and barbarity on a scale that I cannot quite credit. So trigger warnings galore this morning. The details of what protesters in Israel are seeking to defend will I, I don't know what figure of speech to use because any traditional figure of speech or cliche is going to make is going to trivialise the issue. I, I, I'll get onto that shortly, but I'm warning you now. It's about as discuss. It's not only the details of the story at the heart of the protest that are disgusting, but when I tell you what the protesters are actually doing or saying, you're not going to believe me. Bob tells me this is called creative avoidance. I like that phrase. That, that's the process that I suffer from sometimes when I know I should be talking about things, but I just feel that we've, we've talked them to death, as it were. So I'm going to begin, speaking of death, with the tale of newborn twins, whose father, four days after their birth, went to the local government office to register their birth, um, deploying or, 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 or utilising some of the infrastructure that, that remains operational in Gaza, despite the um, bombardment to which the region has now been exposed for months and months. Um, this is in a, a, a region called Deir al-Bala. <laughs> I can't do it. So four days old, dad goes to the local government office to register their birth. He is on his way back, clutching the birth certificates, when his neighbours call to say that his home has been bombed. He gets home, still clutching the birth certificates, to discover that the strike has killed his wife, his twins, his newborn twins, and their grandmother. I don't know what happened, he said. I am told it was a shell that hit the house. Uh, the, the BBC has asked the Israeli army for comment on the strike and um, uh, at, at, at the time of writing, they were still waiting for a response. The um, health ministry in Gaza, which you are required, I think, to add, is run by Hamas, says 115 infants have been born and killed during the course of this war. Sometimes the stories cut through the creative avoidance, don't they? They cut through the fatigue um, and this is one of them. Asa and Asa, a boy and a girl, four days old. Father Mohammed goes to the local government office to register their birth, and while he's there, they're killed. The, uh, the uh, Sky News, I, I don't know if it's right to pick up on this stuff. I, 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 that is a form of fatigue, but I, I found the headline that Sky News deployed on this troubling four-day-old twins killed in Gaza airstrike as father went to get birth certificates. Killed by who now? Killed by what now? Oh, an airstrike. Four-day-old twins killed by the Israeli Defense Force as father went to get birth certificates. So that story is unbearable, right? But believable. Tragically, horribly, totally believable almost perhaps to the point of being unshocking. You know there are people in Benjamin Netanyahu's government who have made it clear that they don't believe there is any such thing as an innocent Palestinian. There are people in the UK media who've come perilously close to making that point publicly, uh, so much so, in fact, that I am 100% certain that they are making that point privately. I also have to now draw your attention to a, another story, which is, I think, although nobody has died, 
in some ways it's even worse. And this is a story uh, about a protest, continuing protests at, um, uh, well, in, in Israel, where essentially protesters, politicians, and TV commentators are defending the right of soldiers to mistreat and even, and this is where the trigger warnings come in, rape Palestinian prisoners in detention. Now, I first saw this on the Al Jazeera channel, the Al Jazeera English channel, which is one of the outlets that uh, still manages to have reporters on the ground in Gaza. Of course, uh, that is not something that many British news organisations are able to do because Israel won't let them. And because Al Jazeera is Qatari-owned and clearly has an editorial slant, you, you, I, I tread carefully. Whether I should or not, I don't know. But the report that I saw <clears throat> was absolutely clear because it, it, it includes footage from Israeli television. It includes footage of Israeli politicians. It includes the Twitter feeds of uh, Israeli public figures. And the contention of these protesters grew from reports of IDF soldiers, army reservists, a, a leaked video, and this is the biggest trigger warning of all, a leaked video of Israeli soldiers torturing and raping a Palestinian prisoner in circumstances that I don't think I can legally share fully with you at 12 minutes after 10 on a British, on a regulated British radio station. I don't think I can give you the details. I can tell you that the video uh, uh, has been broadcast. I can tell you that the place where this torture took place was, uh, and I'll probably mispronounce it, Stay Tayman. It's two words, S-D-E, new word T-E-I-M-A-N. Thousands of detainees from the Gaza Strip were brought there after mass arrests by soldiers. Um, this is from Haaretz, an Israeli newspaper, I, 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 over 100 years old, uh, and they have reported that very slowly the full dimensions of the horror emerged. Stay Tayman was a place where the most horrible torture we had ever seen was occurring. Um, the testimonies from people serving at the facility or from inmates who had been released were frightening. This included inhumane conditions and abuse, including sexual abuse, sleep deprivation, the playing of extremely loud music for long stretches and severe physical violence. It's not for nothing that Stay Tayman has been called the Israeli Guantanamo. But it gets worse. The video of soldiers apparently raping a prisoner in this detention centre has prompted protests in defence of the soldiers. I'll say that again. In defence of the soldiers. Supporters of the Israeli government or elements of the Israeli government, up to and including Israeli politicians, made their way to where they thought the soldiers were being held and tried to effect their release. I'll, I'll say that again. A mob of Israeli protesters made its way to the facility where they thought the soldiers, filmed apparently raping a prisoner, were being held, and they sought to illegally effect their release. The soldiers have now been released. I think all of them have now been placed under house arrest. They've been released from the um, military incarceration and, and placed under house arrest. And protesters shouting, this is Sodom, a, 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 an Old Testament reference, of course, to the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, are arguing publicly that Israeli soldiers should be able to mistreat Palestinian detainees however they want. This is part of the defense of the same soldiers who were arrested for the abuse of the male Palestinian prisoner at the Stay Tayman base. And Israel is our ally. Uh, as I say, the reservists, I think, have now been released. Certainly, some of them have put into house arrest. And politicians and journalists have, have joined in. So here is an Israeli journalist called Yehuda Schlesinger. 
filmed on Israeli television. I, I stress that point. This is from last week. Uh, he says, I don't give a rat's ass what they do, speaking of the soldiers, uh, to that Hamas man, speaking of the prisoner. I always remember, first of all, the only problem for me here is that it's not a regulated policy of the state to abuse the detainees. I, 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 a stone-cold war crime, which he thinks should actually be uh, legally ratified in Israel. Because he says, first, they deserve it, and it's great revenge that we should give them. So the idea that Israeli uh, 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 atrocities enjoy support from public figures up to and including the point where they claim that they have every right to be every bit as uh, abominable and barbaric as ha Hamas members were on the October the 7th terror attack has become completely irrefutable. He adds that it may also serve as a deterrent. Um, he has since called his comments a mistake, so it would appear that there is still uh, a point beyond which Israeli public figures are currently not prepared to go. Israel's Channel 12 aired a leaked video of the alleged assault. Again, I stress that in case you're thinking of wasting time telling me not to trust Al Jazeera. So Israel's own Channel 12 aired a leaked video of the alleged assault, prompting uh, Bezalel Smotrich, who remains a member of Benjamin Netanyahu's government, to say that those who leaked the video should be prosecuted and not the soldiers. Those who leaked the video should be prosecuted and not the soldiers filmed in the video apparently raping a prisoner. Uh, the National Security Minister, I'll say that again, the National Security Minister, Itamar Ben-Gavir, has been filmed stating that any action, any action is permissible if it is done for the sake of national security, bearing in mind that the victim in this footage is already in prison. So quite how any case can be made for claiming that it was somehow, uh, a, a, I mean, how can a sexual assault ever be in the interests of national security. Israel's own high court has been hijacked by supporters of the soldiers filmed apparently raping a prisoner. Uh, they arrived there to uh, uh, resist a petition to close down the base where it happened. They, they heckled judges, they heckled the courtroom. And I, I, I don't know if I'm the first person to bring this story to your attention. I've got a horrible feeling I am. And yet, of course, when details subsequently disputed of the October the 7th atrocity in Israel undertaken by Hamas were first reported, some, some of those reports subsequently turned out not to be true, but there are obviously a, a catalogue of disgusting conduct Every T was crossed, every I was dotted. The, 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 the level of reporting, the scale of reporting was extraordinary. Uh, I, I was personally constantly being um, uh, exhorted to, to watch hideous footage, to cover on my show all of the... Long after Israel had started exacting its bloody re revenge upon entirely innocent Palestinians, I was under constant... Um, uh, rhetorical bombardment to talk more about the uh, subsequently disputed or disproved details of elements of that horrible attack. And yet I am probably the first person to bring this to your attention. I understand why people who have been somewhat uh, unquestioning in their support of Israel over the years and over recent months aren't talking about it, but I don't really understand why the rest of us aren't. I don't really understand why it is. Um, it's not creative avoidance, is it, Bob? It's something else. I, 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 to speak for myself, I feel sick. And I don't like feeling sick. And that will be part of the reason why I, I could have talked myself out of doing this today. But what's happened here now is that media querulousness and epic double standards have gifted the modern state of Israel, the government of Benjamin Netanyahu, an almost 
unbelievable impunity. To the point where Israeli citizens, politicians and public figures, when presented with evidence of a prisoner being raped, protest the prosecution of the rapists. A national security minister responds to the leaking of footage depicting the rape of a prisoner by calling for the people who leaked the footage to be prosecuted. While a mob arrives at the prison where they believe the rapists are being held, demanding their release. And of all the times I have sat here and said to you, I cannot make sense of this story. This is by some distance the best example of that. An absolute abomination. A an atrocity beyond my comprehension but compounded by public support for the culprits. And if you cast your mind back to October of last year, when it was almost a capital offence to point out that the Palestinian people in Gaza had legitimate grievances about their historical treatment, without even flirting with the notion of, of defending or condoning in any way the barbarism of the terrorists on that day, nobody who takes money on a monthly basis to comment upon current affairs, has, to the best of my knowledge, publicly revoked their support for Israel, publicly acknowledged that things have now gone to a point that they cannot credit and cannot even begin to condone. They have all gone silent. And I don't understand why, because, look, let me show you how easy it is. This is barbarism. This is inhumanity on a scale that I thought had been consigned to the history books. This is behavior so disgusting, so despicable, that just when you think you might have got your head around it, along come protesters demanding the release of the culprits. So how did this happen? 